In this episode, all about play. We will explore why play is so important for children, important concepts of play, the types of play or play patterns, and two theorist stages of play. Since there are so many types of play and they all sound similar, I made this video to try and simplify it for you. After you watch this video, quiz your knowledge with our pod quiz episode. I'll post the link below. Let's get functional. Play is considered to be the child's most important occupation. It allows the child to explore and interact with others, objects, and the environment, which promotes growth and development. Play allows the child to experience sensory, motor, cognitive, and social skills within their culture. So how a child may play, say, in Japan, may be different than one in Africa than a child in America. Other contexts that play take place include physical and social context. Here are five common themes of play to keep in mind. Play is fun. Play can be free from rules. Play involves free choice and is intrinsically motivating. Play involves participating. It can be sedentary though. Last, play is focused on the process rather than any outcome. If you look in your textbook or online, you'll find many types or patterns of play. Exploratory, sensory motor, functional, relational, Gross motor, fine motor, social, dramatic, parallel, pretend, symbolic, imaginary, complex imaginary, constructive, rough and tumble, and so on. There's so many. So as there are so many types of play, you can organize this information in many different ways. I'll try to simplify it. It is worth noting that many types of play can be seen to begin at birth. Many of these play types are intuitive and sound like the terms. These do not really have distinct age groups either, by any theorists or anything. Let's start with my favorite OT topic, functional play. The way I remember functional play are cause and effect toys. Push a button, something happens. Social play, as explained by socialist Mildred Parton, begins early as the infant interacts with their parents. For example, they may respond to facial expressions. Gross and fine motor play includes the use of the body. It's also known as physical play. An infant may explore the room around them using their gross or fine motor skills, like using their hands to hold a toy rattle, and they're grouped together because they're known as physical play. Cognitive play is another one. The baby may act on an object and understand how it works. Cognitive. Sensory play is intuitive as it sounds. Sensory as in taking the senses. Sensory is also known as sensory organization or regulatory, like how you regulate your sensory needs such as sensory input that is too much or too little stimuli. Now, we will integrate more specific types of play that are often associated with age groups by theorists. But keep in mind that children don't move from one stage of another play to another. Instead, they integrate and build on previous types of play and are able to have more in terms of the toolbox that they have in their capacity and the play patterns that they all use. Piaget is known for his stages of cognitive development. He also helped us to organize and understand play in developmental stages as well. Some of the patterns of play coincide with these stages in children development. If this is unfamiliar to you, check out part one of the Pediatric Developmental Theory series on this channel. The first type of play is exploratory play, from birth to one year. The infant explores the world around them in their first exposure to play. You already know about one type of play because you learned about the sensory motor stage from Piaget. Think sensory. The infant plays by exploring sights, sound, touch, and being held. One thing to note is that sensory motor play sounds like sensory play or sensory regulatory play mentioned earlier. Lucky for us, both sensory organization slash regulatory and sensory motor play begin at birth. The next age group is one to two years old, often referred to as relational play. Relational play is when children use an object for what it is used for, or its relationship, like giving a teddy bear something to drink. To distinguish from functional play mentioned earlier, which is more cause-effect, relationship can be more abstract. At around one to two years, pretend or symbolic play also begins. Pretend play is a form of symbolic play, where children begin to use objects or other things for their imagination. Keyword is begin. Think Toy Story or playing with dolls, teddy bears. Role playing is another form of pretend or symbolic play, like tea parties or dress up. From two to three years is thought of primarily as symbolic or imaginary. 
They continue to participate in imaginary play, and due to their improved fine and gross motor skills, they can also participate in constructive play, or to build and construct things. Think Legos for constructive play. Rough and tumble play also begins around this age. When I think rough and tumble, I think play fighting, wrestling, that kind of thing that parents may even engage with with their children. Rough and tumble play does not necessarily need to have rules. Next, from three to five years of age, the child begins to play simple games, simple rules, checkers, candy land, that kind of thing. From five to seven, the child begins to participate more in sports and social activities. Then, from seven years onward, the child begins to further develop their interests in play. Another way to categorize play is to think about socialization and how it changes with age. For this, Mildred Parton's stages may help. It is thought that these play types build on each other and prepare for the next stage, even if it does not seem like the child may be doing much in terms of actual playing. First is unoccupied play. Think about an infant's random movements, for example, such as with their arms and legs. They're not necessarily interacting with anybody. Next is solitary play, also known as independent play. Just like how it sounds, the child plays alone. Just like Piaget's stages, it happens around two and is important because the child learns to entertain themselves. At around two and a half years, the child participates in onlooker play, or seeing what others are doing and how they're playing around them. As they are onlookers, they do not actively participate in the action, but their attention is focused on the play activity. Perhaps they are held in their parents' arms as they watch curiously, for example. At around three years, this allows them to participate in parallel play, or when the children play comfortably next to each other, they may share materials and converse. You may hear the term associative play. Similar to parallel play, the child still plays separately from another, but they are not involved with what each other are doing. An example is building two sandcastles but they may be talking and engaging with each other or associating with each other. Still, they are not directly cooperating with each other. At around age four, cooperative play may begin and is the stage where children truly begin to play with each other. It is also known as social play. It requires social interaction and cooperation, such as agreed upon roles and rules, puzzles, board games, that kind of thing. Remember, an adult can be playing too. Cooperative or social play continues to build at age five with sports and recreational activities. From age seven onwards, the child continues cooperative play as they develop their own interest. That's all for play in a nutshell. I hope this video helped to simplify play for you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to test your knowledge with the pod quiz episode and subscribe so you don't miss a video.